This is really cool. I'm a collector of antiquarian maps and engravings. I, I'm going to give a very short <coughs> version of this because, again, I want to get to this really feisty conversation, this passionate conversation we're going to have here just in a moment. But I want to, I want to, we talk the structural things. I want to talk a little bit about the inspirational side of what we need to do as a nation to get ourselves back on our feet. I collect antiquarian maps and engravings. I have about a thousand of them. I, in my office in Fort Lauderdale, I have a museum, a museum of the age of discovery. And I have maps dating back to the world is flat pre-Columbus, you know, right up through the uh, middle of the 19th century. And these maps tell an incredible story because the age of discovery was fueled by trade. And these men on these sailing ships with the cruise of technologies accomplished so much. And we are the heirs of these men. And it's quite an honor if you study them and understand who they were, what an honor and privilege it is that we have this connection. Now these four maps that you see here are on display. And they were published in 1774. Uh, they, were, they were published by the very famous photographer, Tobias Conrad Lauder, one of the most famous of his day from Germany. I'm quite certain that it is these maps that our founding fathers, Washington and Adams and Jefferson, they would have had copies of these maps. These maps would have been the center of intense debate as they planned this fledgling nation as it burst onto the world stage. And if you look at these maps in 1774, North America is the only continent that is still yet unexplored. In fact, Lauder doesn't even attempt to show what is in the western part of the United States. These maps were published when Meriwether Lewis was just one year old. It would still be it would still be nearly 30 years before Lewis and Clark would sail up to Missouri looking for the mythical Northwest Passage, the shortcut to China. It, when, when Washington and Adams and Jefferson got together, and where they were, in, whether they were in New York or Philadelphia or Boston, and they looked out west, they might as well have been looking at the moon. You know, so the lesson that I learned uh, from studying these maps is that from the very beginning, the very beginning, the founding of the United States, we reached out into the unknown. We conquered our fears. We got outside of our comfort zone. And we grew this most incredible nation by doing what Americans do, by going out into the unknown, by, 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 Conquering their fears. George Washington himself was a photographer, and he believed that his success in the United States were in his ultimate expansion westward. Conquering the unknown. I have another thing here I, in, that I want to share with you, and then I'll be done. You know, in, in studying uh, the maps and, and being involved in, in trying to find all these things, I became I, I, I became intimately um, uh, knowledgeable of a very important man that I considered him my mentor and one of my great friends. I referred to him all the time. But he was a young boy when these maps were made. He lived about 200 years ago. I bought from his estate all of his documents and writings and his books. And his name was Elijah Lincoln. Elijah Lincoln was, a, was the captain of one of the great American clipper ships that sailed the seas in the early 1800s. Uh, the, the ship sailed out of Salem, Salem Massachusetts, uh, and it, it was called Pawtucket, and it sailed the world on what was called adventures. You would have investors like you have today, and they would invest in these voyages, and the voyages were called adventures, because when they went out there, they had no idea what they would find or if they would even come home. And in his own writing, in his own words, as he went out into the unknown, as he went out to find his American dream, he ran into such incredible challenges. 
There was one letter I, I, I have that he wrote that his men were so looking forward to come home. And they were leaving South China on the way to San Francisco. And two days out, they ran into a storm. And it almost destroyed the Pawtucket. The Pawtucket had to limp back to South China. And it took them three months for it to be, for it to be fixed. And during this time, he's writing how the men uh, are, are, the morals are so down and that they're getting totally out of hand. He doesn't know how he's going to be able to control them or if he will even be able to fix the ship to be able to eventually make the voyage back home. He went to Batavia, which is current day Jakarta, and, uh, and I have this invoice, and he wrote a letter about it. He, he had a, a, a load of Colt 45 revolvers, and he's talking about what a big hit they were, and they sold out very quickly, and the next time he goes to Batavia, he's got to get more of them. He went on from Batavia uh, on his way back home, and he's grounding the southern tip of, um, of, of Africa, and he, and he came into these what really massive storms, and he was already out on the sea for about a month, and, and there was still three weeks to go to get to Santa Helena, which is this little island off of the coast of Africa, which where they would reprovision themselves before they would eventually reach New York. And he's saying how the men were so sick, they had no food, they were hungry, they didn't make it as quickly as they thought they did, and that the men were so sick that they could not sail the ship anymore, and they were just floating out there hoping that they could recover. Wow. You know, think about these great Americans as they looked out into the unknown and what they must have been thinking and what they went through to be successful. So as you see right here, this is the genesis of the United States. This is the beginning of the American entrepreneur. This is the beginning of the American spirit. And as you can see, Americans have always been at their best when we have gone to the unknown and we have taken with us our passion, our energy, and our love to create a better life for ourselves and our family, our neighbors, and those around us. But I look today, and today America is so full of anxiety. We're scared. We don't know what to do. Will these jobs ever come back? I've got to tell you, we are going to get that back. All we need to do is recapture, to reinvigorate, to reignite the spirit that was in such abundance at the founding of our nation. And to go out into the world and do what we have always done best. Like our founding fathers, like Elijah Lincoln, going out into the world in conquering the unknown. There are 27 million small businesses in America today, yet only 240,000 of them export. That's less than 1%. There are literally millions of American entrepreneurs out there that are waiting to be inspired, that want to get into the game, that need a vision to drive them. And if we can ever come up with that vision, and if we can ever inspire them, we can build this nation greater than it has ever been before. But it will not be easy. It was not easy for the founding fathers. It was not easy for Elijah Lincoln. But they did it. And we can do it. Yes, we need a vision. And then we have to dedicate ourselves to go out into the unknown, to conquer our fears, to get out of our comfort zones, to take this great American dream of ours and take it around the world in the products and the things that we make. Because if we tear down these barriers and these manipulations and these distortions, and you unshackle the American entrepreneur, we will have more jobs in this country than we could ever fulfill. Everyone that would want to work will have a job, and only those that would not have a job would be those that were unable to work or those that did not want to work. It is within our capability, it is within our history, it's within our foundations, within our fiber. I know that we can do it. What say you? So I would like to open it up now to the floor. As I said, this would be passionate, it would be feisty, and I would like to get everybody in on this discussion. You know, what do we need to do to recapture, to reinvigorate this great American dream of ours? Because once we do that, 
everything else will be taken care of. So thank you.